Hey friends and music makers, Mike here and today I will explain how a compressor works in music production. Here we go! In this example I will show you how to apply compression to a single track in your music production. Specifically I am going to apply a compressor to this electric bass track here. But first Let's listen to the 8 bar beat I have made. Ok, so now let's add a compressor on this electric bass track. The process is different depending on the music production software you use, but basically you are going to look for an insert effect. In Logic Pro X, which I use, it's over here in the inspector, and I will add a plugin, and here we have the compressor plugin. Alright, so then for the settings of the compressor. So what I would like to do is to bring out the pluck of the strings uh, for the bass guitar. And I can do this by adding a bit of attack time to let the pluck get through and then compress the sustaining part of the sound. Alright, so to be honest, I have actually started by applying a preset for an electric bass guitar, and I actually strongly advise you to go through the presets that comes with your compressor, because most often the presets are actually really great for what you are after. So if you are looking for a voice compressor preset, you can go through those here, uh, for guitars, keyboards, drums, etc. But I have started with a preset for electric bass and I can see right away that the settings actually suit the kind of sound I am after. Alright, so let's go through these settings. The threshold is set at almost minus 30 decibel, which is quite low, so the compressor will have much audio to work with. Uh, the ratio is at a well, a medium setting at almost 3 to 1. Uh, the attack, this is the important part, is set at around 60 milliseconds and the release on about 300 milliseconds. So, by having the attack at, well, in this case, 59 milliseconds, the pluck on the bass guitar will not be compressed only the sustaining part of the sound will be compressed, which means that you will increase the clicky pluckiness of the sounds, and this will make the electric bass be heard in the track over all other instruments. Okay, so those were the settings, uh, or at least the most important settings. Now, another thing to notice is this thing in the middle here which is called the gain reduction meter. Most compressors have a way to visually see how much in decibel the audio level is reduced after the compressor have compressed the audio level above the threshold. Now let's listen to how this electric bass track sounds with compression applied. I will play back the track without the compressor on, and during the playback I will turn on the compressor, so listen closely what happens to the sound. So that was a live example and demonstration of what a compressor effect can do on a single track in your music production. Now let me explain the foundation of how a dynamic range compressor actually works. 
Here I have drawn uh, the digital audio scale with a peak at minus zero decibel, and the lower it goes, the more the negative values are here. And I have also marked with a red line the absolute peak value. No audio goes above this. This is where audio is clipped in the digital audio scale, which is zero decibel. All right, so let's say we draw a waveform here. And let's do a simple version that it goes like this. It starts low, go up to like minus 10 decibels, go down to minus 30, goes up again, hits the ceiling here, goes down, up, and down. Right, so that's a very simplified version of an audio wa waveform. And now let's add compression on this audio here. So, the first thing you do is set the threshold level. This is where the compression will start working. So, let me draw a line here and put the threshold on minus 20 decibel. This means that for every piece of audio here above minus 20 decibel, the compression will be applied. And as soon as the audio goes below this threshold, the compress compressor will do nothing. So, basically, the compressor will compress the peaks that goes above this threshold that you set on your compressor unit, which we set at minus 20 decibel here. Next is the ratio, and the ratio is how much the compressor will compress these peaks. So, if you set the compressor at 2 to 1, it means that uh, it will basically compress the top, the value here to be half of the distance from minus 20 to minus 10. So, basically, this will be peaking at minus 15 decibel. And uh, then you have the attack and release. Those are a bit more complicated, by, but basically uh, the attack is how fast the compressor will start working its compression uh, after the audio has gone above this uh, threshold level. So if you, if you set a slower attack, uh, the compressor will let these start of the audio go through without compressing it. Um, let's say you set it at 50 milliseconds, for example. Then, from this moment and 50 milliseconds after, from here, the compressor will start working. And the release is the opposite, but at the end. So, how soon after the audio has passed below the threshold level, this blue line here, Will the compressors stop compressing the audio? All right, now let me show you visually what happens to the audio waveform after you have applied compression. I will draw a yellow line to show how the audio waveform will look like after the compression has been applied. Below the threshold level, it will be exactly the same. As it reaches minus 20 decibel, the attack time comes into play. So, if we have, for example, 50 milliseconds of attack time, the compressor will do nothing for 50 milliseconds. So let's say that's here. After 50 milliseconds, the 2 to 1 ratio of compression will be applied, which means that this peak here will be lower and will be minus 15 and then go down, sorry, I can't draw here, <laughs> and then after it has gone below the threshold, the release time comes into play. And let's say we have a very fast release time, so it follows just along here, the same, here again, a bit of attack time, then it will look something like this, and let's say it will look like that.
Now here comes the important part. As you can see here now, the peak values are no longer at the top of the digital scale, which means that you have decreased the dynamic range from which is the difference between the lower parts and the louder parts of the audio. And this means that you can now, after the compression has been applied, increase by gaining the volume level so that these peaks are once again closer or at the top of the digital audio scale, which means that the average loudness level will be higher for this track afterwards. To make this a bit more clear for you, let me just pull up the yellow line now. So the audio is peaking once again at the top of the digital scale, but as you can see now, the average volume of this yellow line, which was after compression have been applied, is higher than the white line, which was before the compression. Alright, so this was a brief overview of how a compressor works in music production. Now I have a special bonus for you. I have included a link to a quick mini course about the compressor effect. Get it completely for free. Check it out in the video description. You are welcome. My name is Mike and I'll see you in the next video.